And today we're exploring a bunch of different areas, and I got decks with me today. Ah, oh, it's me. Ah. Uh, oh. What is this? This is not some kind of... Uh, this is the first kind of realistic game I'm commentating over. What are you doing? Whoa. Bring me in here. This doesn't look like a cartoon. I don't know. The uh, damage that Laura can take is pretty cartoonish. Oh, okay. Yeah. Also, the amount of damage Laura can take is pretty cartoonish. <laughs> Yeah, so this is, um... Oh god, I forget what the area is even fucking called, but... It's... Uh, it's, it's not a good area. This is for what, for what I remember. No, this is a small area. This is not Shantytown. Oh, okay. Shantytown is getting its own goddamn video. <laughs> a whole video to itself? To, to itself, yes. Yeah, that, I could believe that. I remember trying to puzzle my way through that place and just being like, what? Do I... Uh, uh, no? Okay, I'm lost. Help. Someone. <laughs> it's even worse when you're trying to 100% it because everywhere it looks the same, but I'll, I'll complain about Shantytown at a later time. This is not the time nor place to complain about Shantytown. So what is your experience with this game? Have you played this game? Have you 100 percent this game? I have played this game. I did not 100 percent it, but I did play this game and I did enjoy it. Like I burned through it in like a day few hours like i think i got like a play time of seven hours in it and i played like all day one time because i think it was sick and i had it on steam and i was like oh, i'll just uh i'll just play this i heard some people say oh, this is an all right game and i'm interested to see what it's like i heard it's like uncharted and then it was like uncharted and i was like cool i'll just sit here and play this game all day <laughs> Oh, well, there are a couple games out there that are like uncharted but bad like how do you fuck up this sort of thing so badly. I don't know, it's a pretty simple, straightforward thing. You I think, think of a couple of cool things to destroy, and then mm -hmm. you destroy them, and then you just repeat that process about five or six times, put them about an hour apart from each other. Yeah, I got some good cutscenes, some likable characters. Some weird supernatural shit going on? Yeah, it's not... It's not too difficult... Now, have you played any of the other Tomb Raiders? Um, yeah, I played... I think, actually, I think I have Tomb Raider 2, like, kicking around on PC somewhere. Um, so I played that one. I actually have, like, vague memories of my dad playing Tomb Raider 1 um, on, like, a Windows 98 or something like that. <laughs> um... I, I played Tomb Raider 2, like, a little bit when I was a bit younger, and I was, like... I, I, I was one of the people that played it, like, for gameplay, whereas all the people at school who were like, oh, I should play this game, mate, they were, they, they were playing it because Lara Croft movies. Yeah. Um, so I was like, what's the appeal of this game? <laughs> um... I didn't really get very far in it. Uh, I locked the butler in the freezer, and that's about all I remember. <laughs> um, I had Tomb Raider Legends on the Xbox 360. I think that was one of the first Tomb Raider games I owned. Yeah, one of the one of the first. Uh, sorry, one of the first 360 games I owned was oh, okay. the Legend, um, and I thought that was pretty good actually. From what I remember, I had a good time with that game. Uh, this is the first one I had ever played, and then for the LP, I tried playing the first game, hmm. and then I got to one particular level where I was like, wow, this game is bullshit, and I'm not having fun with it anymore, so I stopped. Oh, yeah, I remember, because you were doing a blind 2 red of 1 thing, Did so you stopped doing that? Doing yeah, that I stopped doing that because <laughs> I, because, like... I seriously wasn't having any fun with it, and I'm not going to force myself to do... Something that I'm not going, I'm not having fun with ever again because, like, f fuck, I already did that for all for one. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. That's all right. I I know the pain. <laughs> I know the pain. Go watch his nuts and bolts LP. It's pretty good. Yeah, check it out vndlp.com. Wait, that's not right. YouTube.com <laughs> forward slash vndlp. This is a uh, the mountain base, I think, mm. and. For some reason, there's no destructibles here, but I always think that there are destructibles here when I'm running around on it. At least, I was in my practice run. For this run, I remembered, like, oh, that's right, there's actually nothing to destroy here. So, don't bother looking. 
Because I thought that, like, almost every area has, uh, has, like, collectibles or destructibles that mm. count towards the 100% stuff. Yeah. And I've said before, but those are a bitch to find because you can get treasure maps for all all of the areas. Yeah. And they'll point you to where most of the stuff is, but they won't point you towards those. Hmm. So if you don't remember where you got them, because they're not marked on the map, then, well, good luck trying to find ones without a map. Or, yeah. Yeah. It's... I- I yeah I I haven't I haven't like I said I haven't 100 percented this game but I did watch um my fiance's sister like trying to go after all the collectibles and she was pretty far into it um and I just have like this this memory of watching her trying to find this thing like she was over by the beach. And she was, like, looking for this collectible. She's like, where the hell is it? And she was, like, looking at a bunch of guides. And, like, when 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 she found it, it was, like, under the water. Yeah. And I was just sat there, like, how is anybody supposed to know that's there? <laughs> this is ridiculous. There, there are abilities that you can unlock for Laura. Where if you go into her hunter vision mode. Oh, yeah. Then uh, it'll highlight like collectibles and stuff, but it'll also highlight ammo and enemies mm. and animals, and it's just like it just highlights everything, so it's not really that useful. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. But yeah, this this game is a bit of a bitch to one hundred percent it. And yeah, I've played the game a couple of times. This is the first time since I beat it the first time mm. that I've bothered one hundred percenting it. Other. Every other time, I just, like, tore through the game, and you're right, it's about six, seven hours that way. It's about seven, eight hours, yeah. It's a good length game. Yeah, just it's a decent Don't try it 100% game. it, otherwise no. you will hate yourself. No. I just, like, I knew there was collectible stuff in it, but I was just like, I don't, I don't care, I just want to play the game. <laughs> I just want to play the story. All right. The, the geothermal caverns... Are also pretty easy to 100%, but there's a little thing that you have to um, keep in mind is that the destructible here, they're all on the ceiling. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, shit, I remember this place. Oh, fuck this place. This is an <laughs> annoying place. I remember trying to fight my way through here. Yeah, the, this place is pre- pretty annoying because you don't have your guns the first time through. That's you right. You only have yeah. your arrows. And then, like, if you get caught, then backup arrives magically, and they all have machine guns, and they are a bitch to deal with because you don't have your own machine guns. I actually tried to use mostly, like, I tried to stick to my bow and arrow, and I got pretty good with that thing. Yeah, um... I used to say that the shotgun was my favorite weapon, but yeah. having played through this game for the 100% for the first time in a while, let me tell you right now, the upgrade machine gun just gets ridiculously good. The machine gun? Yeah. Hmm. Because the machine gun also has a grenade launcher attachment to it forever. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> and you can easily find ammo to it, so you pretty much have unlimited... Uh, grenades for the most part that's wow yeah that is ridiculous yeah I love the grenade launcher <laughs> <laughs> bow's pretty good too though yeah I did try to stick to a bow and arrow cause like it meant that like you could get through most like shooting sections really quickly if you took everyone out really silently and quickly yeah that's the nice thing about the uh, the bow and arrow yeah is that no matter where you shoot up guy with the bow and arrow, if you're sneaking around, it's an instant kill. Which I don't think is the case for the guns with the silencers. I think with guns with silencers, you need to get headshots in order to, uh, to take them down without getting caught. I always shot, like, ev- like even dudes hadn't seen me yet, I always shot them in the head. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you whether or not that's right. Hmm. I-, I know for a fact that the bow is always a... Uh, is always a kill if you manage to get them when they're not seeing you, but oh, I'm okay. not so sure about guns. But I'm pretty sure with guns, if you don't headshot them, even with a silencer on, they will still uh, catch you. Hmm. 
Man, they really need to get someone to clean this place up. It's a mess. I know. It's covered in blood and body parts. And I think I see a Commodore 64 over there. Yeah. Wow. How'd that get here? I don't know. Who wants to play Pac-Man with me? <laughs> oh, God. Isn't the Commodore version of Pac-Man? No, I'm thinking Atari. Yeah. I thought... I remember one of the console versions of Pac-Man supposed to be the worst version of Pac-Man <laughs> ever. Yeah. And it's the Atari version. Because they were trying to bring an arcade game to the Atari, and that does not work out very well. I've never actually owned or played on an old, uh, like, Atari or Commodore game. I've never done that either because mm. by the time I was born the yeah. uh, the Atari that we owned was broken <laughs> that's a sneaky one I didn't even catch that one in my um in my practice run that guy got away from me for a little while in my practice run I actually had to go back there and get him my parents own a spectrum and I don't know where it is I know it's in the house somewhere <laughs> but I don't know where it is and the rest of the video is going to be spent in the uh, forest area. And originally I wasn't going to include the last two areas that we were in mm -hmm. in this video. But then yeah. the video was only like seven minutes long. And I was like, oh, well. I did not do any of the secret tombs in this game. Which is terrible, I know, because it's Tomb Raider. But I didn't do any of the secret the tombs. The secret tombs are the only things that I actually go out of my way to do in non-100% runs. Because... They're fun, except for one. I, yeah, I found one by accident, and um, I, I was just in there, like, looking at it, and I couldn't for the life of me figure out what I was supposed to do, so I just went, Am I sp do I have to do this? And then I was like, wait, nope. Oh, well, back to the game. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. There's there's only really one that I don't like, and we covered it last video, but it's the one with, um, where... There's a bunch of wind, and you have to, like, time a plat to raise a platform. Oh, that was the one I found. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that, that's that was... the worst one to just stumble on, because that's the that is easily the hardest, too. I found that one by accident, and I was like, what am I even supposed to fucking do? Yeah, no, that's, that is the worst one. Of course I would find the worst one by accident. <laughs> but most of them aren't too bad. So is this a, this is the definitive uh, definitive edition, right? Right, which is just uh, PC at max graphics, basically, oh, and then so all the say, DLC this was not, included. This does not look very much different from when I played it. <laughs> yeah, that's because it's just the PC version on console. Yeah. Hmm. Like the definitive edition is basically just like, well, we had all the PS, we have all the DLC on it, and also uh, Tress FX. Oh, yeah. Which, I, what are your opinions on the stress effects? The stress effects are on the hair, right? Yes. I mean, I get why they use them, because it's an easy way to animate hair. But at the same time, I kind of feel like... Uh, they just probably could have spent like, a little bit more time just kind of getting the hair so it doesn't clip through the bow and the arrows. <laughs> <laughs> As shown yeah. right here. Uh... And also, no matter no matter what you're doing, it's only, like, the ponytail parts that, like, fall down. So, like, yeah. half of her hair, when hanging upside down, is still acting like she's still standing straight up. I mean, I know, I, I you know, I, I spent a lot of time with an animator. It's my fiancé, she's an animator. So, I, I know, like, stuff like hair is a pain to animate. Uh, I, I know it's like a nightmare, so I can't really say, oh, I think they should have spent more effort on, on this, because I, I get it, like, if there's an easy way out for animation, animators will take it. Yeah. <laughs> because it makes their job easier. Like, the only people who I know who don't do that are Pixar, and that's because Pixar is just, like, fucking obsessive yeah. over shit like that. Because I think with almost every movie they've done... They've had to, like, build a new hair engine from the ground up. I think the only time they ever really shared ones were when they, um... I think they used the same stuff for Violet's hair as they did with Sully's fur. 
Yeah, I think that sounds that sounds right. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only time they ever just were like, "Well, we don't have time to do a thing, so we'll just reuse that thing we did." Yeah. Yeah. But usually they build something new from the ground up, which is just like damn impressive. Yeah. I mean, I just, I know in general, hair is just, when it comes to animation, hair is just like, where do you even start? <laughs> I draw occasionally, and let me tell you, like, hair and hands are the worst. Oh, man. Well, feet too, but usually, but the answer to feet is just, put some shoes on them. <laughs> yeah. Don't have to worry about toes anymore. Well, if you draw a naked person, that doesn't make very much sense. <laughs> Kayla, why is it? Why is your life drawing got shoes on it? <laughs> Shut up! No. <laughs> uh, she she came in with those on. She's uh, she's a never nude, but she, but she says that the shoes technically count. <laughs> Trying to find a mushroom because the mushrooms are bitches to find. Like yeah. even looking at a map is a. Uh, it helps a little bit, but, like, they don't really give you detailed areas of where to find them. What is she going to do with his mushrooms? Is she going to make a really big stew? I don't know, because, like, in the last video, uh, I I pointed out the fact that she's in the mountain range collecting eggs. It's yeah. like, Laura, why are you collecting eggs? Those aren't archaeological finds. You're not a biologist. She's going to make a sick-ass omelette with those eggs. And the mushrooms, apparently. Yeah. Oh, well, that's gonna be great. Yeah. I mean, Only, um, uh, unless the, the mushrooms. Safe to eat? Yeah, unless the mushrooms are actually safe to eat. Somebody in the thread, tell me if red caps are safe to eat. I have a feeling like they aren't. Because that's what the mushrooms are, apparently. Because it's a, uh, it's the challenge is called red cap roundup. So. Oh, right, and another thing that um, the, the treasure maps are c only kind of helpful, but in another way that they aren't really helpful is that they don't give you any uh, indication of where vertically on the maps things are. So you can be standing like right on top of where the game says a GPS is and be like, where the hell is the GPS? And it turns out it's like 20 feet above you. And in this case, one of the treasures that I have to get is in the trees. You know, one main thing that bothers me about, like, collect, like, 100% collection in games like this, it's like, the game's sort of semi-realistic. So when you get, like, a, uh, like, a kind of cartoony game, it's like, when you're collecting stuff, it's like, you don't care, because there's a cartoon already. But, yeah. like, when, when it's collection in a sort of a realistic game... It's like, why would they do that? <laughs> Did they just suddenly decide that they were going to start collecting mushrooms and eggs? At least uh, the Batman games sort of give a plausible explanation for this. Hmm. It's because Riddler's hiding shit all around and uh, Batman's yeah. just like, hey, if I find all this shit, I'll ruin Riddler's day. An and man, nothing feels better than ruining Riddler's day in hmm. any of the Arkham games. Yeah. I mean, I I get it in Uncharted because he's he's a treasure hunter, so he finds treasure and he's like, "Oh yeah, give me that shit." But in, in this game, it's like, Lara, why why are you collecting these things? <laughs> Do you need them? Um, for for the GPS things, when you find the first one, she's like, "Maybe if I find a bunch of these, I'll find out what they're about." So I guess her natural curiosity is getting the better of her. Well. That, yeah, uh, that explains it for the Jeep. Yeah. And then the relics, well, she's a fucking archaeologist, I can yeah. guess. Yeah. But, like, journals and, um, and, like, red caps and stuff like that. I don't fucking know. Yeah. She's like, well, I better arbitrarily pick this up. It just, uh, it just really seems to kind of highlight the, uh, sort of, I don't know, padding of the game, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it is. A, it's not really fair to call it padding because you don't have to do it. It's just kind of like, yeah, like you said, like this arbitrary stuff Dear you Flambe. don't have to do. Deer Flambe! Uh, oh, 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 man. A deer gets to live another day, I think. 
Yeah, yeah be careful. You're going to start a forest fire. Smokey, Smokey the bear will be unimpressed with you. <laughs> Whatever, I'll murder Smokey bear. Yo, yeah, don't do that. Well, how could you say that? <laughs> <laughs> Have you met Lara Croft? She will uh, murder anything that gets in her way. Yeah, that's another thing we can talk about. Like, <laughs> the first guy she murders, she's like, Oh my god, I can't believe I killed the man. Oh no. And then she goes around blasting people in the face directly afterwards. See, I I was actually talking with this with Skippy. I actually feel like it's sort of handled realistically because the first thing she kills is a deer and then she yeah. apologizes to it. Yeah. And then, like... She just keeps getting pushed and pushed to the point where, like, yeah, she'll glad she'll gladly and gleefully run around murdering men with grenade launchers, screaming <laughs> that she's going to kill them all. Yeah. I mean, they fucking broke her. I guess so. They didn't even mean to, but they broke her. Oh, they, no, I don't oh, think the deer lives. Oh, oh, yep. You got him. I think that was the same deer because it went down pretty easy. I mean... It just, it's a little bit weird, because, like, the first time she kills a person, she damn near has, like, a mental breakdown about it, and then, like, directly after that, she's shooting people. <laughs> so she's not, she's not, like, had a moment of, sort of, I don't know, to think about what she's done. She just instantly goes around and starts doing it more. Well, remember, Roth is like, you're a survivor, Laura, you can do this, and she's, uh, all yeah. of a sudden she's like, yeah, I can murder a bunch of people, I guess. Well, thanks, Roth. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> Thanks, Dad ass. Because <laughs> he's a badass dad. Yeah. Blood stains. Someone. Uses uh oh! Someone sees the knife. It never comes up. In an untoward way. Oh, <laughs> good. Yeah, and it never comes up. But yeah, we're done here. Everybody else gets to enjoy all the uh, the nice journals at the end of this. Is that, are we, we done? Is that it? I am alone now. The rest of them are dead. This is for the best. I watched from the cliffs as their makeshift boat was tossed and turned by the storms. The clouds look like a hand upon the water, desperately clawing at their doomed boat. None survived the wrath of the storm. I observed it carefully. The storm was localized and sudden. And just as suddenly, it was gone. And this is the most interesting detail. It didn't seem random. I sensed emotion. Something deliberate. I don't know what's happening on this island. Not yet. But if I ever hope to escape, I must understand this phenomenon. Now my real work begins. For better or worse, I now follow Father Matthias. If I'm going to be stuck on his island, at least I have the best possible job. He calls me his first salary. Matthias might be insane, but he's smart and dangerous. He knows things about this island. I believe is our only chance of ever getting out of here. Matthias keeps us happy. We control the guns and the food. Anything the storm brings to this island is ours, and we decide the fate of any new survivors. Any who defy us are killed. We are masters of this fucked up prison. A plan is taking shape in my mind. In order to unlock the power of this island, I first need to understand what has happened here. I need time and room to study this place. There are many mysteries here, foremost of which the ruins of an ancient Japanese empire and a mysterious queen. It all started with her. Over the years, there have been other survivors, but I've avoided them. And if they got in my way, I was not merciful. But now I know I need others. In order to move forward, I must fully control this island. So I will gather a small group of loyal followers. They must understand power and the need to organize. But more importantly, they cannot hesitate to kill or use violence. It will be part of their life here. 
They will need structure and purpose and work. But when this island is mine, I will discover the true secret of the storms. The years pass and I now hear her whispers in my sleep. It is the Sun Queen. She is urging me on. I see her magnificent face with every sunrise. Soon now. My Solari toil in her name, building a city from all that she has brought to the island, torturing and sacrificing in her name. Soon now, we will find the one. I long for escape, but not simply from this island. From all of this, the wrecks, bodies, and squalor. If I can bring my queen back, it will all vanish in an instant. And like the sun rising anew, she will bathe all the land and seas with her light, burning away everything. I will emerge from this scorched earth, reborn and pure. Lara, I'm sorry. I got you into this mess. I made a promise to your father. The last time I saw him, I swore I would look after you, keep you out of trouble. And what did I do? I put you right in the thick of it. Now you're the one looking after me. You know, you're just like your father. He was smarter, wiser, and stronger than anyone I knew. And he never gave up, no matter how tough things got. I worry about you. But I know if there's anyone who can survive this place, it's Lara Croft. Whatever happens, I want you to know that I loved you like the daughter I never had. I'm proud of you. Storm Guard Warriors, today we stand on the brink of a great change. The enemy fleet that sails to our shores will be the last to ever attempt an invasion of our beloved Yamatai. The rage of our great Sun Queen will raise up a mighty storm, and we will ride forth upon the winds to destroy them. But when we emerge victorious, we will not stop. A new day will dawn as our Queen's light will reach across the ocean to touch all lands. While we of Yamatai bask in the warmth of her grace, those who oppose us will burn. <laughs>